2006, the late and very great Steve Fawcett, an American record breaker, famous for his balloons and aviation records, decided he was going for the land speed record. And Andy Green and I decided we ought to really build a Defender. Uh, because, I don't know, 10 years or so since we'd done it before, uh, all the pain and agony had passed on, and also uh, we wanted to really do something really special. I mean, thrust SSC had you use 30-year-old jet engines, and the main processor for the active ride suspension came from a derelict tank. Uh, you know, we wanted to just see what we really could do, you know. And um, anyhow, we came up with a basic design, and it's called Bloodhound, after Ron Ayer's aerodynamicist's most famous missile. And Andy was working for the Minister of Defence, and uh, he rang me up one day, and he said, look, uh, you know, I thought this thing through, and what we've got to do is got to go and meet this, this, this guy, Lord Drayson. I said, who, who, who's Lord Drayson? Uh, Lord Drayson is the Minister for Defence Equipment and Support. And we wanted to separate the, the good minister from a thing called an EJ200, which is a Eurofighter engine. So there we are. I went into the meeting, and uh, he was extremely interested, very friendly. And I uh, love motor racing, so, you know, we were certainly on the same subject. Uh, I didn't make any obvious signs of committal. <laughs> And then he suddenly made a statement which changed all three of our lives forever. And he said, you can help us. And nobody's ever asked us to help them before. And, you know, this is normally it's always the other way around. And uh, so I said, quickly, we've got to keep the conversation going, for God's sake. Quickly. I said, yes, of course. What can we do? And he said, we've got a huge problem in the MOD with a shortage of engineers. We can't recruit engineers. It's an absolute nightmare. And he said, in the last century, there wasn't a problem because we created those fantastic aerospace projects. And every kid used to study them. And I want you to go out and develop a massive engineering iconic project, run it through all the schools, and help develop the next generation of engineers. And he went on to say, I'm not giving you any money. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, wow, hey, this is a challenge. So I said, yeah, we're going to do it. So I visited a large number of engineering companies. The situation is seriously bad. Airbus are having trouble even retaining engineers. Astrium, the satellite company, couldn't require them. We couldn't recruit. Empire and EDF, the less glamorous end of engineering, real problems with recruitment. And of course, even worse, the engineers have done very little to promote themselves or their industries. The institutions produce high-level reports, little else. And the profession has the image of an old, attached industry, um, totally male-dominated, which is hugely out of date and very embarrassing. And then we made that magic connection. It was one of these sort of funny moments when the light goes on, you know. And what the kids and everybody needs is more than anything else is real data from real projects. Suppose you could have a real project like the Moon Project going on, and you could get all the data as it actually was happening, not just many, many years later, or, um, or not at all if it's NASA. Um, you know, um, wouldn't that be fantastic? And just as it's beginning to happen, etc., you could follow it every single, every single stage of it. So we started Bloodhound in July 2007, and true to Lord Drayson's suggestion, we set up an iconic project. To be iconic, it's not just going 10% 10, 10 faster. We've got to go 30% faster. Mac 1.4, 1.4 times the speed of sound. I wanted 1.5, but Ron the aerodynamicist said he was only going to 1.4, so I also got to, uh, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get to 1.5. But that's a hell of a number, that really is. And we've got, we've got a design team at the moment of 17, and we've been working for 20, 29 months on it. And, and uh, we have just announced today that we're moving into the build phase of the, the project. It's been very, very difficult. Um, in the meantime, our six-person part-time ed education team has built up the most enormous following from the schools. And uh, we've just finalized an agreement with Intel, and that means that uh, the, the Intel school program, which goes to five million teachers, will feature blood down heavily from January onwards. So there's another five million teachers coming to this thing. So, I mean, it's just absolutely amazing what's happening now. And the, thing, the interesting thing about this is that the people signing these schools up are not head teachers or, uh, or uh, local authorities or whatever. It's the classroom people. They're saying, you've got this thing right. You've got it right. And we, you know, we, 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 we need this. OK, let's take you through the project. This is basically what we've got to do. We've got to do it in 10 miles. OK, and we've got to go slightly faster than 1,000 miles an hour to make sure we average the 1,000. So 1,030 is the target speed there. And you can see the acceleration curve. It's really not too bad. Um, we're about um, under 3G acceleration and about um, minus 3G deceleration. So, you know, it's, it's perfectly comfortable. That's all right. Design has been a very, very difficult proposition altogether. There's nobody who can help us out there. 
The aerospace people can't help us because they're all about aeroplanes. And uh, the car people, of course, uh, they can't help either. So, uh, you know, there's quite a, really quite a problem here. So we're out on our own. The only way to do this is to design a car to the shape that you think is probably best, okay? Do the design, then put it through the CFD, get an appalling result, bin that design, move on to the next one. So it's this terrible sequence, and the car's been redesigned 10 times. And it's been very, very difficult. I mean, it really has, because people have been saying, you know, this thing's never, we're never going to get there. It can't be done. And they've got there. They finally got there, which is really great. There's still a bit of fiddling around to do, but basically they've got there, and we've got the shape now. Um, we've done a lot of structural optimization, topographical optimization, which has ended up this rather extraordinary uh, steel structure at the back. And you can see the basic layout of the car there with the EJ200 at the top and the rocket motor underneath. Ahead of the EJ200 is the 500 litres of jet fuel tank. And then in front of that is the V12 engine. That's an MCT 4.4 litre, 800 brake horsepower V12 engine, which drives the pump. And then right at the front is Andy Green. And on either side of him, there are two water tanks. Uh, and the job of the water tanks is basically to provide coolant for the, for the engine. Uh, here's our engines. Uh, we've got three, the early development ones. There aren't any spares, so uh, they're absolutely uh, unique. They can't be upgraded to combat status. They're very early mod numbers. So um, we've got one at Bristol and two at RF Coningsby in storage. Here's the V12 engine and the pump. Pump came from the Avro Blue Steel nuclear standoff bomb. Here we are doing early development trials with the uh, six-inch rocket. We've done 11 firings of that. Getting this car built is a huge battle. It's going to take uh, 20 months, and it's going to cost 6.3 million. Quite where the money is coming from, nobody quite knows, but we've got our plans, and we're at it. And when you leave here, you'll see um, uh, Ian Glover up there with all the merchandise. He sold 141,000 quids worth of merchandise in just under a year. So it's going really well. Join the supporters club, and you can have your name on the fin of the car for 10 quid, all right? So you can actually travel to Mac 1.4 with Andy. Um, and it's a huge battle. Whether the British establishment is actually going to join this thing or not, we wait to see. It's going to be very interesting. Last time, they all stood adrift uh, and weren't going to be part of it. We never had anybody from the city or anything like this. It's going to be very interesting to see if they really do join this, because the big companies in this are people like Lockheed Martin and Intel. So there you are. We're going to try and change the place if we possibly can. Thank you.